Hi, Gratitude Seeker. If you've been listening for a while to the Gratitude Podcast, you know by now that every year in December, in the second half of December, we do a review of the year and we find three things in each month that we are grateful for. And um, the beautiful part about this exercise is that it gives us a different kind of perspective about the year that we had. Even though, especially this year, it's been quite challenging, we can still find many things that we are grateful for. Without even knowing it or realizing it, by writing three things that we are grateful for in each month, we will have 36 things that we are grateful for in this year. The first way of doing this, and the one that I love most, is by looking at the pictures that I took in this year and relieving moments, experiences that I had, and feeling grateful for the fact that I got to experience them. Another way is looking at your gratitude journal, looking at the things that you've written in different months, and again getting into that state and appreciating that experience once more. Another way is by looking at the pictures you have on Facebook. Especially if you like to post a lot, you might actually get a, an overview of the, the beautiful moments in in the year. And of course, it's uh, pretty similar to, to Instagram as well. The goal here is to go from January 2020 to December of 2020. It's very easy and comfortable to just Think about the bad things that have happened in this year. It's socially acceptable and it's something that many people do. But I still think that there are many things that have been great about this year. And we can all find at least three things to be grateful for in each month of 2020. So I invite you to either do it right now or make the time to do this. It's not something comfortable to start but once you get into it you will see that it really shifts your perspective on the year and it gives you much more hope for 2021. There are many things that we cannot control but we can control our focus and we can control what we choose to see and what we choose to appreciate. So to help you out with this with some inspiration what you can write I will start with my three reasons to feel grateful for each month of 2020. The first thing that I'm grateful for is the fact that I chose to have a quite different birthday celebration and instead of just sitting around the table I wanted to do something more engaging. We went to a sort of amusement park, indoor amusement park and it was a great choice. We had a lot of fun and it was very engaging. So I'm grateful for this experience. I'm also grateful for a short break outside the city. We went to an inn that's called Harmony Inn and we enjoyed some beautiful days close to nature. I'm also grateful for receiving the redesign of the podcast artwork. I really wanted the new artwork for the podcast to be created by this local artist that I really appreciate and I'm really grateful that she was able to create something beautiful in tune with my vision. In February, I'm grateful that I went to a hike with a good friend in a, an amazing location. Uh, and even though it was February, it was warm, it was just the perfect temperature, the sun was amazing, um, we had some good conversations, and even though it was a bit challenging, it was challenging in a, in a beautiful way, in a in a way that uh, wasn't too hard, but nonetheless it was engaging and quite fun. Another experience that I'm grateful for is that for the first time in a while I went out with a friend at a football specific venue to watch the game between our local team and FC Sevilla, a team that actually got to win Europa League. And I'm very grateful for all of the emotions that we got to experience. We were actually very, very close to beating them. And the emotion was even more amplified by the fact that the place was filled with people that were passionate about the team and about football in general. The third thing that I'm grateful for in the month of February 
is that we got to reconnect with a friend that's living in Barcelona, the one that we visited when we were there. And it was quite amazing that we got to reconnect and talk about life and the things that have changed. But also about the beautiful part of friendship. The fact that even though time goes by, when you reconnect with some people, it feels like you just spoke yesterday. And I'm very grateful for that feeling. For March, I'm really grateful that we got to help my girlfriend's sister with her flower business for Women's Day. The fact that even though it's much harder than it looks, it's very fulfilling knowing that we got to help people share beauty, love and appreciation. Another thing that I am grateful for in the month of March is that we got to experience nature's revival. All of the beautiful sounds it brings, all of the beautiful colors and all of the beautiful smells that we get to enjoy in spring. The third thing that I'm grateful for in the month of March is the fact that even though the lockdown began, we weren't affected. We still got to continue the work that we're doing and what was happening outside didn't have a big impact for us. For April, I'm grateful that I got to learn to make bread. And I'm not even joking. The fact that we know that we can be self-reliant gives us a sense of comfort. Even though I'm grateful right now that we don't need to do that anymore. The second thing that I'm grateful for is the fact that we had people working in those moments and that we had everything that we needed. Another thing that I'm grateful for in the month of April is the fact that we got to travel through stories. At least I did. I rediscovered some childhood stories and I got to experience them on a whole new level because since I couldn't go outside much, I had the opportunity to travel with my mind in my imagination. In May, I'm grateful that we got to see our family dog's puppies. I'm also grateful for the fact that I got to work on the abundance course, going from lack to abundance in seven weeks, putting together all of the things that I've learned and sharing them with you in an organized manner. I'm grateful that we got to go out in nature and visit one of the places that's very well known in the area, but we just didn't get to see until now. I guess by now you get the hold of what you can write. Even in the most challenging months, we can find some things that we can be grateful for. And I invite you to take the time to do so. As you have heard, there are simple things that you can write. Simple things that can mean a lot to you. You may not get why it's a big deal for me that I experienced some of the things that I've shared. But for me, it was something worth listing, worth appreciating. So at the end of this year, please take the time to write this list. And like in my case, if there are people you share beautiful memories with, you can let them know and you can thank them. It's something beautiful and unexpected for someone to reach out to you to say thank you for sharing an experience that he or she is grateful for. And it's a beautiful way of spreading that gratitude. In this way, they are also thinking about those moments and it creates a beautiful connection based on mutual appreciation. Thank you so much for listening. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A new year filled with hope and lots of reasons to feel grateful. This has been Georgian Bantam. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude.